Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Play Metroid Prime. It's Prime Time! And, Bory, howdy! It's been a hot minute since I've last touched Metroid Prime, huh? Like, as of this recording, anyway. So, all of the video footage that I've uploaded from uh, parts 8 through uh, 12, I believe, we're on part 13 now. That has all been in 2019. And here we are, hopefully on the right track, uh, within February of 2020. Uh, needless to say, I've had a lot of complications uh, pop up since then. And hopefully, we are recording on schedule and not having to upload things uh, several months um, behind, so to speak. Because, again, I've just had so many complications in life pop up as of late and it's prevented me from you know recording this game as much as much as i'd like really so uh yeah here we are in phase on minds i had to do a little bit of improv before jumping into this video because because i had to be like wait a second where the fuck are we at in the game you know i i i actually just kind of forgot up until we you know hit this point of the playthrough and uh phase on minds phase on minds and I was looking back, and I'm happy that I took care of some business in the previous room before doing so, because something in the back of my head told me that, you know, something like this, where it was going to turn into another Twilight Princess incident, was bound to happen again. And hopefully, this doesn't end up having nearly as many delays as Twilight Princess ended up having. So, uh, yeah, let's try to avoid that in the long run. Hopefully, maybe, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, going back into the swing of things here, uh, Phase on Mines is what I'd consider to be the toughest part of, uh, Metroid Prime as a whole. Um, more specifically, our first run of Phase on Mines when we're going to obtain the, uh, power bombs. And that is because, uh, from point A to point B, you are faced with nothing but a long gauntlet of all of these different kinds of space pirates and metroids we are at the center of the core of space pirate operations after all so it's pretty natural that you know what at this point they're basically giving us their full throttle um they're not holding back in any capacity and this also kind of applies to the fact that like there are no save stations up until uh, we get the power bomb either and on top of that we have to fight an, ex an excruciatingly annoying mini boss uh before we can get the power bomb and that this this will probably be the only time in the game where i actually exploit it using the wave buster because i can't afford to take any losses here uh but yeah now that i think about it i actually forgot to do this several videos ago because there was some point or another where i had to turn the screen brightness down to the midpoint so that way i could see during a specific boss fight i think it was thardis and i i never bothered to change it back and the quality freak in me is just annoyed by this fact because like i guess it's just based off of how my capture device you know captures footage of this game but there are a lot of areas that end up being darker than they normally would appear to be and it gets really excruciatingly annoying, especially when I can't stand it. When I'm seeing all these little, you know, mistakes just piling on top of each other, which may not be as bad as I'm making it out to be in retrospect, but like, again, I'd like to avoid these kind of things from happening. And uh, yeah, it's something I'm gonna try to avoid from here on out. So uh, yeah, this here, um, one of the main gimmicks uh, we'll be encountering in um, the space pirate um, base of Phase on Mines is the different variety of troopers. Uh, these troopers come in different varieties, such as wave troopers, power troopers, ice troopers, and so forth. Um, as their name implies, the only way you can beat them is by using the beam their color corresponds with. And I especially don't like the wave troopers because I've talked about in the past how I don't like the wave beam 
And on top of that, the, the beam combo, you can use your charge beam combos um, as well, but only of the corresponding beam to attack these foes, right? But the Wave Buster drains so many missiles, and you gotta hold on to as many missiles as you can throughout, you know, phase on mines. Because again, the only kind of ammunition refills you're gonna be getting along the way are gonna be from crates. You cannot pop into a save station midway through and be like, oh, I'm gonna recharge my energy and missiles along the way. You need to hold on to these missiles. And I'm trying to hold on to as many missiles as possible for the mini boss at the end. And as a result, um, dealing with the wave troopers is a big giant pain in the ass. Uh, the ice troopers aren't so bad because I can simply just freeze them and shoot them down with a missile upon doing so. And then the power troopers, I can just use super missiles and call it a day. But the wave troopers are easily what get on my nerves the most. I would definitely put them at my top five list of most annoying enemies in Metroid Prime for certain. Because the wave beam is just so drastically underpowered. Way more than most people would think otherwise. But yeah, lots of space pirate ambushes. Very little in the way of like refills. Um, it, this is definitely... Um, the hardest part of Metroid Prime 1 without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. And, uh, especially in hard mode, because you gotta remember, we are playing in hard mode, so that does account for the fact that not only are we taking double damage, but the enemies have more HP as well. It is artificial difficulty, I am aware. But, uh, god damn it. <laughs> I definitely want to at least show off, um, to some degree that, like, this game... Um, can be tackled in hard mode if you know what you're doing without too much trouble. And, uh, of course, since this is a space pirate base, there is a lot of space pirate data to be found. So make sure you scan every single goddamn computer. Oh, boy. Ah, elite pirates. So, yeah, this is definitely implying uh, that the phase on sickness that they had alluded to earlier is kind of affecting their mental processing and it's just yeah you can kind of see what it's implying from here in this logbook entry but there have been some experiments that have had some degree of success maybe we'll run into that at some point Oh boy, that's that's a scary thought. Yeah, normal space pirates are nothing worth writing at home about. It's mostly the wave troopers that piss me off because, uh, well, you can see how much they've drained my energy because of how long it takes to kill them with the stupid wave buster or wave beam as a whole. Sorry. Um, but of course, a, a research lab of this caliber wouldn't be complete without a few puzzles along the way. And that's the shitty thing about this, too. Like, again, since we don't have, you know, a save point up until the very end of this, like, if you die and you get a game over, you have to do all of this shit all over again. The puzzles, the, the enemies' onslaughts, all of it. And I remember, like, when I first played through Metroid Prime, I got my ass handed to me on so many occasions in this area. I cannot begin to express how much of a difficulty spike the phase on mines are compared to the rest of the game. It, it is definitely what I'd cons if, if somebody had to give me a list of some of the hardest parts of the Metroid, you know, saga as a whole, this would definitely be in my top five for certain. This. This place will kick your ass if you are underprepared. And it's a place like this where I cannot ever see myself doing a minimalist run at Metroid Prime. I'm sorry. Like, I know there have been people that have done it, but, like, I, I don't think I have the patience to do it in this kind of place. Especially with the wave troopers around and them just being completely ruthless. You have to keep your distance from these guys. Like, you saw what happens... What, what happened whenever I ended up running into one without really taking a look around my, at my surroundings and getting shot by one. I took a lot of damage. These guys hurt. They hurt. They are painful to deal with. I fucking hate these assholes. And, uh... <laughs> 
you have to deal with a lot of them because this game had this place had probably knows like the developers probably had an idea or an inkling of you know some kind of degree that you know what uh, the wave troopers are probably the most annoying because the corresponding beam that you use to beat them isn't quite as uh powerful as the other two we have so we're just gonna litter the place with them and uh piss the player off oh boy Luckily for us, though, there aren't too many expansions to find along the way, at least not in our current state. Um, one of them is actually up there, and we'll be taking a look at that in just a moment. Yeah, and it's looking like our energy fill-ups here are pretty sparse. Yeah, not too many to find at this point in time, so... And there is our power trooper. Super missiles do indeed work because this is part of the power beam charge combo, so I'll be sure to use that for these guys here. If I could, you know, make my way back up there. In fact, now that I think about it, let's go ahead and get this ready. Oh, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. Okay, Power Trooper. Alright, buddy. Oh my god, he actually took that. Oh wow, that was... That was kind of awkward. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot how beefy these guys are. Good god. And I'm already kind of low on energy. Ugh. Man, I, for <laughs> I forgot how brutal this part of the game was. Ugh. I'm hoping maybe we can possibly get some more energy reserves on the way. So what we need to do here is have this fire into these walls here. And you want to do this for most of them, because upon doing so, you'll find some goodies underneath uh, the walls, including a missile expansion, which we'll be getting here in a moment. I do want to check all of them, mind you, because you, you never know. You might find something else in between. Nothing terribly special. Let's just go ahead and skip it on over to the left side here. And I gotta check my brightness settings again because I swear I, I thought I. Okay. Yeah, it's so dark in here. Like, it doesn't appear to be that way on my TV, but I'm looking at my capture device footage right now. And it's a lot darker than. But my television is making it out to be. That's so strange. Ooh. So this is unfortunately the best I have to work with in terms of contrast settings. And I apologize if anybody ends up being offended by this at some point in time. But I don't know, man. It's a Metroid Prime specific problem that I haven't had with other games I've captured with this, you know, capture device. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Oh boy. Well, at least they tried to make the spider ball segments a little bit more interesting instead of just following the magnetic rail from point A to point B. Oh god, no. Go away. Oh, and the E was right there! What the heck? God damn, dude. And they fire in chunks too. It's not singular shots like the like the space pirates, like the basic ones are. These guys are ruthless. <laughs> Somebody's about to make a meme out of that at some point. I'm 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 for certain. 
So this here is an interesting little puzzle. I did not want missiles. God damn. Well, you know what? I guess I might as well hold on to them as we go. But yeah, um, this here is a puzzle of which there are three different switches depending on what level of this floor you're on. And you want to adjust this structure to where each of the colored panels lead to a specific point. So right here, for example, uh, I do believe we want to get the red one uh, connecting to this part right here. Uh, we won't be able to reach the tippity top uh, just yet, or at least the other side, that is, at, at least until we run into uh, another upgrade we'll be getting later on. So, yeah, let's fix that up. And then we're going to come back down here and then adjust the red magnetic rail to where it connects to that part we just set up. And I like how they have a little diagram on the left too to kind of indicate where the positioning of these rails are. It really helps out a lot. I like how they had the little foresight. <laughs> And um, to like be able to show us these kind of things because the, the, you know just looking at it wouldn't really give you the whole picture, you know. And I apologize if I end up being silent at some points. This kind of area really demands my utmost concentration for certain because I, I slip up and make one mistake like that and it could potentially cost me the entire game or at least the entire part anyway I wouldn't want to redo all of this oh my god and they throw these guys in chunks and I mean you saw how long it took me to defeat that one wave trooper and imagine fighting five or six of those at a time oh my god so painful so now I want to see if we can at least get something out of these guys um, okay got a little bit of energy not much but I'll take anything at this point oh god can we do it Okay, and I can't quite reach to one of the top, so... Ugh. I got what I could for now. Now, I do think this room here might have some boxes for us to blow open. And we can get some energy refills out of that. I'm so glad they gave us the ice beam, at least, before heading into this, you know, area. Because, like, if you're not fighting, you know, like, wave or power troopers... And chances are, like, you won't have too much to worry about in terms of taking on loads of, you know, basic space pirates. Because you saw how quickly they make short work out of, you know, said space pirates. They blow them to smithereens, basically. Got to keep your distance from those boxes. Because, unfortunately, the scan visor did not tell us that they blow up upon contact. And, uh... <laughs> They will damage you if you happen to be, like, within their threat zone, so... Don't get hit! So, right there... Uh, most people wouldn't think twice about this. And I'm glad I remembered this. I hit that. And could Oh, that's cute. <laughs> There's a space pirate waiting for us up until we blew up his cover. <laughs> I, I, I kind of like that, actually. That's a, that's, that's a pretty cute attention to detail. But yeah, definitely worth it at the end of the day because we got ourselves a missile expansion out of it. And we need all of the missiles we can get. We need a lot of them. Oh man, and there is just Phazon teeming at the teeth everywhere. And oh boy, I can tell for certain this area is not going to be too pretty. Uh, it's empty, but that's what they want us to think. Oh gosh. 20 minutes in and we're not even quite halfway through yet. Hmm. 
And I like how all of these, like, different, like, logbook entries are, like, telling us about, like, Samus basically bringing the fight to them in full force. And, like, you can kind of tell that all of this was, you know, typed in pretty recently. And they know, they seem to know a lot about her, too. Like, I, I like how they've... I love the extremes the space pirates go to to combat Samus. Because if you were paying attention to, like, the Power Troopers, like, logbook entry, like, they were actually trying to mimic, like, Samus's upgrade um, material. Like, they were trying to mimic all of her, like, different, like, weapons and such and, like, implement it into their own, like, arsenal. But not without, like, in, you know, indirectly causing flaws and their said arsenal by, you know, having it be weak to the weapon that they created. And it's kind of funny. And this kind of goes back to when they tried to, like, do morph ball experiments and they ended up dying from said experiments. It's just, I, I, got, I gotta love how the Space Pirate da data logbook entries characterizes the Space Pirate so well, where they are willing to do literally fucking anything to stop Samus, even if it includes putting their own lives in danger. As long as they can hold on to the Phazon and the Metroids at the end of the day, they don't fucking care. And it's so... I don't know. I just find that stuff... I find that kind of thing so funny, you know? Alright, so this here is an elite space pirate. Um, the logbook entries... Um, we're definitely alluding to this guy earlier. Uh, they're pretty beefy, but um, honestly, they're so predictable and slow that as long as you know what to look out for, it's basically just an endurance test and nothing more. Uh, whatever he puts up that little thing at his arm, like, he, he puts his arm up, right? And he's got this little bit of energy radiating from his hand. You don't want to shoot him. Because upon doing so, you actually kind of give energy to the elite pirate. And he uses that to deliver even more force into his shockwave. And you definitely don't want that. So it's literally just a battle of patience. You just gotta wait for him to do his shockwave and shoot him in between said shots. And it's... They're, they're a lot easier than, like, the, the space pirate logbook entries make them out to be. They're pretty easy. It's the pay it's the power and the wave troopers that are the real threat here, if anything, because there's there's no distinct clear pattern to them. Like everything else is concerned, you have to actually kind of like legitimately keep your distance from them, or they they just fuck up your life indefinitely. All right, so these are the easiest of the the trio, the ice troopers. And that is mostly because they can be frozen too. Oh god. Can I get some energy, please? I'm not getting any of that. Damn it, dude. Ah. Gotta play it safe. <laughs> I don't like that spread shot of theirs. Oh my god, it, it, it hurts! And it's hard to maneuver your way around it, too. I gotta start playing it safe at this point. Hmm. And there's no energy refills. Hopefully, I, I actually, you know what? We need to go back down because I think I missed some logbook entries. We, we wouldn't want that. No sirree, Bob. It's just, I hate that they kind of positioned them in a way where they ended up being so close to us that, like, we didn't really have much choice but to take the hits. This is definitely where I think like, the combat nature of the GameCube um, controls definitely lends itself at fault here to some degree, because, like, you can't really freely aim 
like your arm cannon to the same degree that like a Wii Remote can. Because I'll be honest, I, I, I've only played Metroid Prime 3 with the Wiimote controls up until I got the Prime Trilogy Edition like two years ago, right? And I can safely say that for the best, I, I definitely think the Wii Moat is definitely the best way to go to play these games. I'm just so used to the GameCube controls at this point that like, it, it's it, it's a comfort zone thing, really. Like, I'm, I'm so used to it at this point that I, I can't see myself switching all that much. But like, if I had to recommend what would be better fit for combat, and then I would definitely say, without a shadow of a doubt, that, like, the Wiimote in general just lends itself better for combat. Because, like, if you're trying to sneak around corners, for example, you don't necessarily have to target the space pirates. You can kind of, like, aim as you would and, you know, s sneak in some shots. And this, you kind of have to, like, lock on to them or you're not going to get a clean shot. Because, like, the free aim in this, like, w when you do this... Um, I mean, you can't really move Samus around, you know? So, it's, a, it's got its own share of, like, limitations that are a product of its time. Like, I think for tank-like controls, it ages a lot better than most of its contemporaries did back in the day. Like, I would definitely play Metroid Prime over, say, GoldenEye any day of the week. But, like, at the same time, I can definitely understand why there are people out there that prefer, you know, the, the motion control scheme, because on an objective scale, yeah, I think it's better. But, like, there are also little things in the GameCube version, such as, like, speedrunner exploits, and, like, that uh, scan jumping and shit, that, like, you know, people prefer to make their runs and playthroughs of Metroid Prime a little bit more exciting, so to speak. And yeah, this is implying that they did indeed find some of these Chozo artifacts and they're lying around somewhere, but they have no idea how to actually use them. <laughs> so they're doing everything in their power to figure out what to do with these set Chozo artifacts and they're not without their own research as well. They've done some. They've done their research at the planet. They know that this was once a Chozo, like you know, civilization. But instead of like you know, quietly you know, taking in the time to like figure out what all of this is, they're just like, "Fuck it, we're just gonna destroy everything." <laughs> oh my God, are those boxes? Not a whole lot of boxes, but it's a lot more than I expected, at least. For even ghosts can be destroyed. Oh my god, enough with the missiles. I don't need no stinking missiles. <sighs> I might have to start farming energy off screen. I, I don't want to end up dying at the end of this video because I've already made like 30 minutes of progress and I don't want to re-record my commentary over again. Oh boy. Metroid Prime. Hmm. Is this the creature that the Chozer had alluded to within the Great Poison? So, this is a big, giant difference in the GameCube version as apart from the Trilogy version. So, Metroid Prime is this big entity that came from the Great Poison, at least in the Trilogy version, right? So, Prime 3 goes into detail of how Phazon contamination works once it hits a planet, right? And with it comes a creature. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I want to save a lot of that talk for whenever we get around to Let's Playing Metroid Prime 3. But apparently in this game, the, the Metroid Prime origins are a little bit different 
because it's, it actually implies that they ran into this creature and supercharged it with Phazon, and it became hungry for Phazon. Going back into, like, you know, reading all of this data. So Metroid Prime's origins are a little bit different in the GameCube version as apart from the Trilogy version, because in the Trilogy version, uh, Metroid Prime happened to be just a, a creature that came from, you know, to meet the Phazon Meteor that had struck Talon for uh, several years ago. And I just thought I'd throw that out there because I'm pretty sure somebody in the comments is going to mention that and say that this is wrong, this is not how I remember it being. And yeah, that that is a big major, like, story difference that, you know, takes place in between the two versions of the game. Otherwise, like, everything else, they're pretty identical for the most part. Oh boy, I think we're getting to the end of this, huh? So that just became a point of no return. Well, at least for now. Oh boy, we better get out of here. Oh no. Let me just hit another spot with a load of space pirates here, huh? We've got to play it safe, man. We've got to play it safe. In fact, actually, now that I think about it. Oh my god! Excuse me? Oh my god! Why are these things so bulky? Is he gonna actually follow us all the way from up? down there. Oh god. There's even more of them. Shit! Can they quit falling off the platforms, please? And he's still alive. It's like every time I come into contact with him, he just shoots me on sight, and I get it. Like, you guys don't have no Stormtrooper accuracy, that's for certain, but, like, for gameplay sake, it's, like, it's a little bit unfair, wouldn't you say so? In fact, you know what, we're gonna start taking some shots in the dark here. And start blasting these guys from right here. Screw everything. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Please, go away. <laughs> No, I didn't want him. <sighs> Can you see how nerve-wracking this is? Ugh. Okay, he's done. He's dead. And we just gotta get rid of that one other dude. He probably knows that I'm trying to bait him out, otherwise he wouldn't be hiding where he's at. I can't help but wonder if there's like some kind of degree of art artificial intelligence within these guys. Ugh. That's gotta, that's gotta explain their pinpoint accuracy. I mean, it's just gotta. All right. Oh man, if that music's still playing, that definitely means that there are still more space pirates to find and kill. All right, I wanna save these missiles for the mini boss. Hold on just a second. Fucking telemarketers. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that clears up the threat, thankfully. Mm. We are so close to our goal. And we're not ending this video until we hit that point. Because mm. once I finish this part of the game, oh my god, it's gonna be such a huge burden lifted off my back. Ah. God damn. <laughs> These space pirate, like, experimentations on the elite pirates really are something, huh? 
But yeah, as you can see, it's got a little bit too much dependence on the phase on, as it said. Tremble <laughs> and, and, and sight over our elite pirates. Yeah, sure. I, I guess I'll just wait them to death. <laughs> I can't help but wonder how they ended up, you know, finding the research data to emulate, like, Samus's arsenal, you know? Oh man, there's even more of these guys. Shoot. Uh... Do I want to? I have to tread cautiously at this point. Ugh. Again, I apologize for the silence, but I've really got to be careful from this point forward. I'm, I don't really have a whole lot of energy left in, in me to like be able to like play this recklessly. Oh God. Oh my God. All right, so I think that about does it for this section here. We'll be coming back to that later, though, once we get the power bombs. There is something of interest beyond that, and we'll be, you know, taking a look at it once we do. So, uh, what's down here exactly? Something that's bound to piss me off, that's for certain. Um. Okay. So that room right there is our destination. So, uh, yeah. Uh, because of how low my energy is, I have no choice but to fucking cheese this asshole with my wave buster. So, again, if you wanted a proper fight, I apologize. But I am not taking any fucking chances here. I will go into further detail of how this boss fight actually goes down once we finish it up. Because I, I cannot take the time to explain everything here at this point uh nice ken is no more we are not playing it nice or honest right now and that was the mini boss i told you i was not playing it nice <laughs> so that there i'm not certain of the name of the creature exactly but um he is the mini boss and he is the only enemy in the entire game where you cannot scan him because you he's not visible enough for you to actually scan him with your scan visor so if you beat up this dude and are afraid that you missed out on a potential logbook entry uh have no fear because he is the only enemy in the game that you cannot scan uh, that being said, uh, you do have to play around with the, uh, the thermal visor a lot to see him, and he's pretty ruthless. Like, if you thought the wave troopers and the power troopers were ruthless, um, think again. Um, basically, aiming at the dude is impossible, right? Like, you, 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 it's really difficult to get a good lock on on him, and you have to, you have to rely on, like, your natural aiming, um, you know mechanics as they are you know free aim and all to be able to shoot down the target in the first place i can't really give all of the specific details because i just blasted them in like 10 seconds but uh yeah um he is very it's he is very notorious for ending and pissing off a lot of players and uh the worst part of it is that he is at the end of all of this and you saw how low my energy was I wasn't going to take my chances. I'm sorry. And there weren't many, like, containers of where I could take and get some free energy reserves from. So, considering that the power bomb is literally right here, and I would lose everything up until this point, until I got the power bombs, because they decided to fucking seal off the save room right before the mini boss. Yeah, I don't have any fucking qualms of, you know, disrupting... <laughs> the boss's strategy and killing them off pretty quickly, you know? Like, <laughs> if you've actually been through this part of the game, you will understand just how painful it is 
to have to go through all of this, everything that has been in this video of 40 minutes worth of progress. If you die right here, you have to do everything from the start of this video all over again. I, I, I cannot stress enough how much of a pain in the ass that is. Again, this is why I consider this part of the game one of the hardest Metroid moments of all time because of this very factor right here. But yeah, we've finally hit the Call of the Storm here and we want to find these weak points here in this little um, Morph Ball maze and blast them with Morph Ball bombs uh, to basically detain the power bombs here and upon doing so we will receive said power bombs and uh, I'm not doing this right so far so I've got to be very careful I don't have much energy left to run on here so once again we got to play it safe we got to play it very very safe okay so the yellow electric bars here are temporary just got to move our way past them once they finish doing their little thing I don't know what the hell these things are supposed to be. They're not what I'd take for <laughs> bombing, though, that's for certain. Okay. And here we are. And with that, we got the power bombs. And the power bombs, like any other Metroid game, come with their own line of expansions. But in this game, uh, power bomb expansions are very few and far in between. In fact, the expansions that you do end up getting, uh, you only get one power bomb from said expansion. And I believe there's only enough power bombs in the game to where you get up to eight, I believe. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of them, so you better hold on to them. On top of the fact that for whatever reason... The, the recharge stations in Metroid Prime only fill up missiles and not power bombs. So unless you're picking them off from crates, uh, the only way you're going to be able to fill up your power bombs is by returning to your gunship. And it can make, break Bendizium. So once we run into uh, anything that's made out of Bendizium, we're going to take our power bomb and blast them away. And it did not refill our energy, so uh, I'm going to head over here and save, because my throat is dry. I cannot believe I hit yet another part where I was forced to go over 40 minutes because of the disparity of save stations. Where the hell were you when I was struggling? Oh my god. But I guess, like, you know, that's always been Nintendo at, at its core, you know? Like... They've not been known for being a mostly friendly, family-friendly company. But they've always had moments like these where at some point or another, they've got to throw in a ball-bustingly hard moment at some point. And this just happened to be that point in the game. So from here on out, it's going to be smooth sailing up until the final area. So, um, well, that's not to say that the boss of Phazon Mines isn't difficult because it can be. But uh, we'll save that for another time. So with that being said, uh, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys then.